handle. I'm not saying some did not take, I'm not saying some did not make some attempts, unquote. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, when you light a candle, you do not put it under the table. The place for it is on the table. For the world to see, Alailua of Dr. F.K. Adetono, the Aujala and Paramount Ruler of Ijebula, has put a candle on the light of development on the table in Ijebula. The Board of Trustees has almost completed the building complex of the residents of the professorial chair on the campus of Olabisi on Obanjo University, and the occupier will move into residence in the next three months. Let me use this opportunity and this occasion to adumbrate the gift of God to Jebulan in the person of our donor, who has, in addition to the establishment of this trust, created another trust worth one billion naira in cash of his personal funds for the maintenance of the Abujale Palace and all appurtenances thereto in perpetuity. Your Excellencies, Cadiaces, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, that is our donor. Our mother, our father, the Aoudale and Paramount Ruler of Ijebulan, where comes another? Baba, the Board of Trustees celebrates you in your lifetime. Happy birthday, Asheri Shamonu, Ashamonu Kushibisi. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, the Chairman Board of Trustees, uh, Mr.
Princess Adetun Adetona Daramola, also a member of the Board of Trustees. Can we please just put our heads together for all of them? All right, I have a long list, uh, naturally, of um, traditional rulers, but before I go there, please join me as I welcome Honorable Justice M.A. Pigbeudu, the Chief Judge of Ogo State. She's here. Thank you, and I understand she's, oh, there she is, my lord. Thank you very much. Um, of course, I uh, charity begins at home, but we'd like to acknowledge our visitors all the way from Lagos uh, to my far left, representing the Ilipo of Eko. We have the white cap chiefs from Lagos. Thank you very much for coming. Thank you very much. I'd like to quickly acknowledge all the royal fathers that are here today. Uh, the Dagurewe of Idora or Adekoya Ogobe is here today. Kalizio. Thank you very much, sir. The Akija of Ikija, Oba Alakija, is also here with us. The Ibumawe of Agarwe, Oba Ee Adenuba, is also here with us. Thank you very much for coming, sir. The Dimeri of Awa, Oba Arubaju, is also here with us today. Kalizi, thank you very much for coming. Oba Ee Alatishi, the big old day of Ososa, also here with us this morning. Oba A.A. Suleiman, the Alaye Abba of Ayekwe, also here with us this morning. Thank you very much for coming. The Oba, the Oba Ndiose of Ileko Ayekwe, I hope I didn't get that right, yes, is also here with us today. Oba W.A. Shobali, the Olohu of Odolohu Ayekwe, also here with us this morning. Oba Eme Hassan, also here with us this morning. Kalesi, thank you very much for coming. Oba J. Fakoya, also from Ita Mako, is also here with us this morning. Uh, Oba J. Kobri of Ilaporu is also here with us this morning. Oba J. Oba S. Salisu, the Namudi of Isiwa. She was also here with us this morning. Thank you very much uh, for coming. Oba G.A. Onofua of Iwuro also here with us this morning. Oba I.A. Adekoya of Ijesha Ijabu also here with us. Oba, I mentioned him earlier on, the Odri of Ayebe also here with us this morning. Oba Oku Bero of Irua also here with us this morning and of course from Ibefo Oba Adetoe also here with us. I will continue with the recognitions as the program progresses. Uh, so please if I haven't mentioned or recognized your person or your office, please forgive me. Uh, it's for reason of time and I shall be doing that uh, just as we do go ahead. Uh, once I'm able to collect myself, I will do that. At this point, it's my pleasure to welcome the Vice Chancellor of the Olamitsu Onobanjo University, Professor Daniel Olachibi, Olachibi, to give us his remarks. Thank you, please, kindly welcome him. Professor Olachibi, thank you very much.
visit which had been followed up by public activities leading to the construction of befitting imposing building complex that will have the professorial chair, guest chalets, and service apartments. It is my belief that the professorial chair building will further strengthen the professorial chair as well as nudge it in the direction of being an appropriate government center characterized by a beehive of intellectual activities. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, today is Tabi's birthday. I would like to, on behalf of the Council, Senate staff and students of Olabisa and Obadjo University, wish Tabi's a happy birthday and many happy returns in good health and prosperity. Ibadu, Odoko, Kabisi, Adwanyatu Badaleo, Your Excellencies, Royal Majesties, Distinguished Ladies and Gentlemen, I thank you for your attention. Thank you. We all thank you, the Vice Chancellor, Olabisi on the Banjo University. Uh, this, if you, the lady behind me, if you wonder why when people are wearing traditional, she goes far away, and when we are not wearing, she comes nearer. I told her that uh, if you find anybody wearing traditional outfit and you come nearer, they, they will take you home. <laughs> so if you notice that when the vice chancellor came, she moved nearer, and when I'm here, she moved nearer. But when Mr. Alaga was speaking, with his cafe, she moved very far away. <laughs> All right, I am going to try as much as possible to um, deal with the protocol. Uh, like I said, we really want to be uh, strict with our time. So pardon me if I don't recognize every one of us that is here. It's not because we do not appreciate your presence. Um, but it's for the reasons that I've said. But I must do acknowledge the family of our donor. Uh, they are here led by Prince Adia Detano. Thank you very much. Uh, the members of his immediate family, can we all welcome them for coming? Thank you very much for um, your uh, father's uh, great work that he's doing. Uh, the Vice Chancellor of Taishola University of Education. Jadu, Professor Ayomi Ariba, who is also here with us. Thank you very much for coming. Um, and outside from in more of the political realm, please join me as I welcome Senator Alabi Jurochai. Very welcome. I have a few people that I can just see from here. Chief Chris Nama Okunawa Bobashua II, Chief Adich Kumar Fasi Yusuf is also here. And as I said, I will continue as we do go along. Um, okay. All right. I understand that the, His Excellency, the Governor of AKT State, Nigeria, uh, Dr. J.K. Fayani, is represented here by his Commissioner for Special Duties and Regional Integration, Alaji Ayodili Chidaru. Where are you seated, Alaji Chidaru? Thank you very much for him. Uh, it is said that the fountain of knowledge, this is the real fountain of knowledge. <laughs> and now I give up to our own. The former Vice Chancellor of Olabisi Olabanjo University, Professor Sabui Ades Soya and his wife are also here with us. Thank you and thank you and thank you. All right, I do understand that um, a Mercedes Benz Jeep uh, SUV, uh, wine in color, with registration number MSR. Triple four double E. It's causing some commotion out there. Can you please remove it from where it is parked? At this point, just before we taste the pudding, which is indeed the third annual lecture, of course, our, our speaker is here, and in a short while, I will be introducing him. 
But we must give honor to whom honor is due. Uh, it's, we have the first citizen of Ogun State present here with us. Uh, he, even though he is ably, very, very ably represented, coincidentally, by one of our own daughters. Please join me as I welcome the Deputy Governor, uh, Her Excellency Chief Mrs. Yetuli Oronoga, as she delivers a good word message from His Excellency, the Governor of Ogun State. Majesty. 
16 of a doctor seeking care of their daughter of CFR or Baba the second, the Aujale and Paramount Villa of Jebuland is indeed a living legend. For all of us gathered here today, there is no better way to celebrate our royal father on his attainment of a ripe age of 85 than being part of his legacy. Oba Dr. Sikiru Adetonam is a man of many parts whose life and legacy will transcend many generations. We are therefore grateful to the Almighty God for sparing the life of our KPAC, for him to continue to contribute his quota and make avail available his wealth of experience and resources towards the process of nation building. Kagese, long may you reign in good health to continue to contribute to the social, economic, and political development of not only the state but also to the entire country, Nigeria. Even as the Aujale is advancing in the enviable league of octogenarians, he is not only respected within the state, but also beyond the shores of Nigeria. KBC has carved a niche for himself as an important voice on important national discourse. It is therefore not surprising that the annual of our Dr. Siki Guadetana Professorial Chair Lecture on Good Governance has continued to set the tone for public discourse in the last three years. Let me therefore, on behalf of the government and the entire 7.2 million good people of the state, welcome all our special guests most especially Professor Ayodele Olukotsu, the discussants, Professor Kinsley Mogalu, and Professor Remy Shunaya. I congratulate the Board of Trustees of the Annual of Dr. CQ Adetan Professor and Chair on keeping the legacy afloat for the past three years. Also, I commend all those who have contributed in one way or another towards sustaining the noble idea of this annual program. Many people outside may not know the importance of continuous dialogue towards ensuring the peace and progress of our dear country. Perhaps some may not appreciate the need to bring topical issues to the front corner of national discussion towards aiding not only the sustenance of democracy in Nigeria, but also towards enhancing the unity and sovereignty of our dear country. This is why fora such as this are commendable, where the political class, members of the traditional institution, the academia, and the intelligentsia can come together and restore for the benefit of our nation. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, but permit me to observe that the choice of the subject matter for this year's event, grassroots governance, the salt on the belly of the Nigerian political architecture, is both apt and contemporaneous in relevance. It is important at this point to note that the challenge of the Nigerian political experience since the return of democracy in 1999 has been how to ensure the population of dividends of democracy down to the grassroots. Simply put, the challenge of the political architecture of Nigeria is making life more abundant for all Nigerians, irrespective of their location, religion, age, and gender. The grassroots remain a critical segment of the Nigerian society, and if the resources of the country are well financed in such a way that even the grassroots 
receive the needed attention in terms of the distribution of infrastructure, it is then we can talk about equitable spread of development. As I have great confidence in the ability of the discussants to do justice to the subject matter, let me quickly add that our democratic journey can only become firmly rooted, while we will also experience a socio-economic boost if only critical attention is paid to the grassroots. This involves mainstreaming the people at the grassroots towards ensuring they are buying in, in the programs and policies of their government. This strategy is best at discouraging socio-economic disconnects between the people and the government. As an administration in the state in the last eight years, most of the successes we have recorded are due to our constant engagement with the people, mostly at the grassroots. We have made it a point of duty in the last eight budget exercises to engage with our good people of Ogo State from all walks of life through our annual town hall meetings. These meetings have become a veritable platform for our people and their government to rub minds together to come up with an all-inclusive development blueprint year in, year out in the form of annual projects. For this, we are most grateful that our administration and the good people of Ogo State have continued to remain on the same page where opportunities for rumor mongering or misunderstanding have become scanty. Even where there appears a misunderstanding, there is always an avenue to resolve this without rancor. This is solely the reason behind the relative peace our dear state has enjoyed in the last eight years. In another dimension, our dear state has continued to break new grounds on the socio-economic front because the people and their government are pulling in the same direction. It has not been by wishful thinking that our administration has achieved a lot in infrastructural projects spread across the length and breadth of our dear states. This has been made possible by the government with vision and the political will to give the state a facelift in terms of legacy projects. The, the people on their own, in equal measure of show of support for their government, have continued to take it upon themselves to provide a conducive atmosphere for the government to perform. It has been this kind of synergy that has backed a new identity for our dear state as not only an industrial hub in Nigeria, but has also given our dear state an enviable status as a benchmark for infrastructural development in the whole country. Even as the tenure of our administration comes to an end, at the midnight of Tuesday, 28th May 2019, we live with our head held high and knowing that we have taken the state a notch higher in terms of socio-economic development. Even at that, let me use this opportunity to reiterate that our site is firm set on finishing strong, finishing well, and finishing high. We are determined to work till the very last second of our tenure in office. Our zeal to continue to make life more abundant for our good people in Ubu State and our zeal to continue to contribute to the development of Ubu State in any other capacity after the tenure of administration still remains strong. Once again, I salute the sagacity of Akar BAC, His Royal Majesty, of my Dr. Siki Rukai of the Adetan of CFR for providing this platform for the distillation of ideas towards the process of nation building. I congratulate our Baba on his attainment of 85 years in the land of his fathers. May the Almighty God continue to grant you sound health and good judgment to continue to provide right leadership not only to the people of Ijebu land, but also to the entire good 
people of the state. In addition, I commend Professor Ayodele Olukotso, the discussant, Professor Kisti Mogadu, and Professor Remy Chunaya, and everyone who has continued to contribute in one way or another to the sustenance of this professorial challenge in the past three years. Long live our cabinetcy, long live the people of Ijebuland, long live the people of Ogo State, and long live the people of Nigeria. Thank you and God bless. Thank you very much. Your Excellency, please extend our warm regards to the Governor, His Excellency. Of course, uh, we do understand that he's away on official assignment. Now we have come to the high point of this event, which is to listen to the lecture in the title, Grassroots Governance, the soft underbelly of Nigeria's political architecture. I once heard, or I found that was recently, that you do not introduce a great person or a distinguished gentleman, you actually present him. Our speaker today, Professor Ayo Ulu Kotsu, is currently Distinguished Professor of Political of the Department at the Department of Political Science on Lapisi Olabanjo University, where he occupies the Oma Dr. Sikiru Kaili and Eternal Professor, Chair of Governance. He was most recently a professor of the Department of International Relations, Obafanya Ulo University. Before then, he had served as a professor and head of department, as well as dean faculty of social sciences at Leed University in Baghdad. He had also previously lectured at the Department of Social Science, University of Lagos, at the Lagos State University, and of course, the Ambadu Bello University. He's an alumni of Obafemi Aulo University, he's a journalist, he's a public intellectual. He has served as the chairman of the editorial board of several newspapers, and he has also, at different times, been members, member of the editorial board of a number of publications. Uh, in 2013, he was named the winner of the Diamond Award of Media Excellence for the informed commentary. He is also a recipient of many international grants, such as the Ford Foundation, Energy Endowment. Uh, he has published over 60 articles, uh, and uh, okay. he's also served as a member of the Federal Government Observer Team to monitor the Ghanaian elections. Uh, he's currently a member of the Olafemia World Technical Committee for the Olafemia World Leadership Prize. He's also currently the President of the Nigerian Society of International Affairs. And then his family is married uh, to Stella, and together they have two boys named Tobitobe and Oluwa Tobitobe. Your Royal Majesty, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, your Excellency is present here this morning. It gives me a great pleasure to now present to you Professor Ayo Olukot to deliver this lecture. Majesty, I'm not here for 
in Ijebode and Ibadan. Now, let me state my main thesis for what I'm really about. Namely, local governments have failed, but we need to replace them. Uh, our guard, eminent Professor Bob Okoje, when I interviewed him for this paper, said that local governments should be scrapped. That was his radical position, and he had reasons to justify that. He says, not just that they are not working, they are a drag on development. And that the way they were created, they are not natural communities, but artificial salads of communities living together in uneasy coexistence. Before many local governments were created, he argued, we had natural communities which had ethnic linguistic affinities and which had high levels of social cooperation. Then they came, meshed this together here, sorry, delete this from that, and then you had this plastic and artificial creations in which it became easy for people to emerge who are not necessarily well regarded by their communities, but they have been quote-unquote elected as local government chairmen and officials. Not just that, I'm saying that we need to rejig the DNA of our institutions at the grassroots combined formal and informal structures in a formula in which there will be dynamic activities at the grassroots. We know now that we don't have that. We have informal institutions which are doing a lot of things. In the land, the the Organization for Poverty Alleviation you know, has been very dynamic. It has raised vast sums.
They are not very well known in most cases. Now, in the US, for instance, you have a top American CEO by the name Michael Bloomberg, who has served three consecutive times as mayor of New York. You know what that means? It brings all the, the capital, the network, the billions, the seats over. It brings all that into governmental development at the grassroots. Not only him, you have Grand Emmanuel, former chief of staff to President Obama, who has been 55th mayor of Chicago since 2011. So, these are organizations and the major government benefiting from expertise, skills, innovation from very top societal elites. But what do you have here? The era boys of great governments and those who are the local governments. And they don't have affinity with their communities. Some are not even from those communities. But at least somebody said in Lagos that there's a local government chairman who are not from those communities where they are chairman. And Lagos may not be the only state. So they don't have commitment to the grassroots which they are supposed to be over. So I find in this paper that anytime you find somebody with pedigree, with influence, who comes home to roost as chairman of local government, you get serious governance outcomes. For example, in this paper, you have it, so I won't read it, on page 21. I found the one Bola Gade Biade, who was chairman of the local government in the battle. And he performed on a different scale because he retired from the corporate sector and came home to be chairman of the local government. So he became an exception. He also have uh, in the shop that uh, the famous Chief Ayodayo, who was to retire from the local, uh, from the corporate sector and became chairman of the local government through collective influence of civil society. And in relative terms, he did wonders. So, one of the issues we need to address is personnel at the local government sector. They can give recycling these people who come from the political elite and who are hoping to move to the next level as state assembly uh, uh, gentlemen and then and so on and so forth and expect that we'll have good outcomes. Now, the other thing that I discussed in this paper, because I'm giving this space to our discussions, is that if we major more on non-governmental organizations at the grassroots, we will get results that surpass what local governments are delivering. For example, in his book, Awujale, the Awujale of Jagula, came down his dream, and it was to build a substantial developmental commonwealth fund equal or bigger than local government 
of power at the grassroots. In the, the Gabulan, KBSC is the preeminent authority. We just had the chairman of BOT say that no politician would dare, uh, would dare insult him or try to insult him without consequences. So, can you take, or take up any serious civic organization or agency or development without soliciting his input? The region, the initiative succeeded, the Ijebu initiative, the city succeeded, because Kabezi took it over and mainstreamed it and used its imprimatur to give it focus, to give it direction. So, local governments can't do it, even if they are better minded. There must be this mesh between local government structures and informal institutions of power. So, my concluding section in the paper, which uh, I've been distributed, I called it remapping governance. We have to remap it, orient it from the current unproductive uh, orientation at the base of government. And to do this, as I've said, we must revise the 1999 constitution as amended. Some are even calling for a national conference, but I don't think that will get any traction under the current uh, federal government, which is opposed to it. So, we can settle down for the next best, which is revising the 1999 constitution as amended. Apart from that, we must build government around the people. Do we even ask what the people want? Development is from top to bottom. It's never bottom up. So, to get effective grassroots government, we must ask what the people want. Not assume that we know what they want all the time. And finally, as I've said, to get community-based organizations at the grassroots to partner solidly with revitalized local government organizations so that there can be a new, a new rhythm, a new DNA between the formal and the informal structure. I thank you for this. Thank you. Thank you, Professor. Uh, he was just asking me if he exhausted his 20 minutes. I guess that's the answer to your question, sir. All right. Prof was probably angling for another 20 minutes. Uh, in a very short while, um, I have a task, and I do please need the cooperation of all our speakers. Um, today is Friday, as you all know, and we have our Juma prayers coming up shortly. So we must finish well before the Juma prayers so that uh, our Muslim brothers can go and avail themselves. Um, but just before I constitute the panel that will go on with this discussion, please allow me at this point to invite our sponsor. Without them, this could not have happened. Um, Drogacom is our sponsor for this event, and they're today represented by Director Mr. Folu Aderibide, who will come quickly to come and share a message from the Chairman of Drogacom. Thank you.
ably represented by the Deputy Governor, Chief Mrs. Yetunde Ononoga, Kabi AC Alai Lua of Asikiru Kayade Aditono of Bagua II, the Paramount Ruler of Ijebuland, all existing protocols. Please permit me to deliver the COVID message from the Global Com Chairman, Dr. Mike Adenoga. It is with great joy and gratitude to the Almighty that I happily felicitate with our Imperial Royal Majesty, Oba Dr. Sikiru Kayade Adetono, CFR, on the occasion of the third annual Oba Adetono Professional Chair Lecture, which is designed to contribute to the institution of good governance in the country. This year, Alai Lua is marking his 59th year on the throne and his 85th birthday. I take more pleasure on this auspicious occasion in once again congratulating His Royal Majesty and wishing him countless more years of good health and happiness. Long may you reign on the throne of your forefathers, Alai Lua. Amen. Again, the theme of this year's lecture, Grassroots Governance, the soft underbelly of Nigeria's political architecture, is very germane and speaks to the objective of the professorial chair, which is to enthrone good governance in the country. Needless to say, the local government which represents the grassroots is the closest tier of governance to the people. If we get it right at this level, we will get it right at the top of, as this level represents the base for governance. It is widely agreed that all politics is local, Sorry. And charity, they say, must begin from home. This is why the family unit is very important in the enjoyment of good governance in the country. Our time honored values should be inculcated in all and sundry with righteousness and truth as all match. I commend the Omolua Paradigm, which upholds good character to all and sundry, including the political class and the electorate. The electorate should, in line with the noble tenets underlining the objectives of today's lecture, ensure that credible leaders are voted for in various communities, leaders who will in turn go to the states and then the federal level to ensure probity, accountability, integrity, and good governance. I'm confident that the guest speaker and other speakers are eminently qualified to do justice to the very seminal topic of the lecture. Once again, I wish our beloved Alai Edua, the paramount ruler of Ijebulan, of our Dr. Siki Rukari Aditano, more successes on the throne of his forefathers, Ibaudun Odukon. Many happy returns, sir. Hearty congratulations. Thank you, sir. Iga, Iga, Iga. Uh, more importantly, uh, Mr. Ari Dibe, the doctor cannot send it to me. Or oh, let's see. Uh, so far, you can't see it. Well, no matter what you're in the country, The thing is, ladies and gentlemen, time is for spending. Um, quickly and quickly, allow me to constitute this panel. Now, the programs of our discussions are on pages, I'm not sure what pages, but if you go through your program, you have that of Professor Kingsley Morganu, um, and he doesn't need a lot of introduction. Many of us saw him only a few months ago, uh, and uh, we listened to him, and we had an opportunity uh, to assess him. If we didn't do that, this 2019, we did that earlier on in the, that's 2015, when we heard from Professor Remy Shunaya. Um, funny enough, both of them have run for office of the president and didn't get the office, but now that they have come for this lecture, if they run in 2023, they will win. This thing is, ladies and gentlemen, please, give me. Uh, permit me, protocol, to welcome the 
So the question then is, why do we have this overarching, um, extremely powerful central government? In politics, it's supposed to give services at the local level. I think that that is the fundamental issue that we have to deal with. Uh, the 2019 elections have just held, and we find ourselves still in the throes of their unsettling and unsettled aftermath. The result of the presidential uh, election is being challenged in court and so on and so forth. And our experience is such that many of us are despairing about democracy, especially the kind that we are practicing in Nigeria. Local and inter uh, international observers, as well as the Situation Room, a coalition of 70 uh, civil society organizations, have characterized the elections as having been marred by violence. That means violence by our people, on our people, at the grassroots level. And uh, many are calling for a nationwide independent inquiry into those elections. Some of the occurrences that we witnessed uh, have never happened before. Uh, I know I might be trading on dangerous uh, <laughs> ground, but for example, uh, the sight of bullion vans arriving in a private home, it meant that the stakes had skyrocketed beyond what they should have been. Two major recommendations for reorganizing the local government areas were identified in Professor Odukotun's paper. First, resolving the constitutional ambiguities surrounding the status of the local government areas themselves. And then, secondly, returning to what Professor Mabu Muje has called natural communities. Those are important. The paper also makes the point that the rest of the world is moving more in the direction of decentralized structures. And I would like uh, to say that this is so true. There is a paper by uh, Mr. Professor Palani to write in uh, the Indian Journal of Political Science, where he uh, states it, where he supports what Professor Olubotu has said on the growing decentralization of governance structures taking place around the world. He identifies some of what that would entail. For instance, limiting the role of the state, downsizing bureaucracy, devolution of power and authority, reducing the cost of governance, developing appropriate appraisal systems, and so on. Our reaction should be, these are the things that we do are talking about in the country, aren't they? So what's the big deal? Well, the big deal is that we just talk. We do not act. We have not yet learned how to move from talking to action. Now, probably the sentence that stands out crucially for me in Professor Olukotu's paper is the following. It says, policies that work elsewhere when transplanted into the Nigerian public sector become totally ineffective. The fact is that official, the official assent 
is usually given by our government, by the federal government, the state government, they will not. Yes, this should be done. And even those who are in the position to do the things, ministers, president, vice president, will be calling on, I don't know who, to do those things. Are you not the ones empowered to act? I think uh, that is a major issue that we are contending with. Uh, I see that you are looking at me. However, let us just quickly mention that what is happening in Nigeria is not necessarily happening everywhere in Africa. It is not an African condition. For instance, in September 2012, the Senegalese members of parliament voted to abolish their Senate. President Macky Sall, he had decided that money should be sourced internally to assist the victims of the terrible floods which the country experienced in that year. And they proposed that the $15 million that were allocated to the Senate would just do the job. Had it been in Nigeria, we would be calling on the international community to come to our aid. And yet, I would want to argue that that is a major issue with us. We do not want to disturb the status quo. We want to hold the status quo stable and expect that certain things would change. They simply would not happen. The senators, the members of the House that are waxing eloquent, uh, talking about the situation in their various states and so on, or how their people are suffering and whatever, have they given thought to the fact that maybe some of the money they are earning is what we need to solve the problems that their people are facing. I think these are the issues that, that we must address and address urgently. This military imposed centralized system that we are running makes absolutely no sense. And it is amazing that the calls to restructure it continue to meet with resistance, of course made by those who are benefiting from it. It should be clear that what is needed is that we allow local resources to be managed locally by qualified people, just like Professor Rupert has said, not people who are, as he said, the errant boys of political godfathers. What is happening in Zamfara State, where a few individuals are benefiting from the gold uh, deposits that that state should be exploiting for the benefit of the entire populace is not wrong. One could imagine, and I will conclude with this, one could imagine that if the states or whatever federating units we wish to create, if they were allowed to manage their resources, Maybe, just maybe, we might actually have had a few developed spots in our country right now. States that would choose to use their resources to lift the generality of their people out of poverty and give them a dignified life. Maybe a few states would have been like Dubai. We wouldn't have had to be running all over the place uh, seeking experiences in Dubai. 
It does not mean, of course, that that would be automatic because there would be states that might have resources, but they will choose to allow a few people to pocket the, the, the benefits. They will be content to take pride in boasting of maybe a handful of billionaires, but other states would do the right thing and be able to challenge the other. So um, on the Ibadan and Ijaboni examples, I'd like to say that these are good uh, efforts, these are good initiatives, but that is not what it's supposed to be. The, the civil society organizations are not supposed to be the primary providers of services to the people. It is the government that should be the primary uh, providers of services. So uh, the, we have to, to tilt the balance. Let the government be there to do their work. And maybe the real challenge of the grassroots is that we must learn to hold our government accountable and not allow elected officials to do as they please. Let me raise my case. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I do apologize uh, just for reason of time. Prof. Professor Mohamed, your first shot at this paper. Thank you. Uh, Royal Majesty, the Aujana Ojebuna, congratulations on your birthday. Long may you be. The Governor of the State, Governor Mamus, represented by the Deputy Governor, former governors of the State, the incoming Governor, all other protocols observed. MC, I have a problem with you. You said that when they were singing the anthem of the Aujani, that I was looking perplexed. I'm sorry for you. Uh, the reason I'm sorry for you is because it's either you're blind, which I don't think you are, because if you're not, and you know the saying, that your dress announces your address, you will know that my address is not far from here. Um, you also can see that my name is Ayodele, so there are two Ayodele's here. And that's because when I was born, my godmother was a Yoruba woman, Mrs. Fuminayo and some of it. So, my connections to this region, now properly established, I think I can make a few comments on Professor Lukotun's uh, paper, brilliant paper. I think we can all agree that local governments have failed. The recent attempt, uh, the recent action of the Nigerian Financial Intelligence Unit trying to give a directive for the funding of local governments to go direct to them is a very welcome initiative. We need to see whether or how far it will actually work in practice. Should local governments be scrapped? Yes, I agree with Professor Lincoln that they should be scrapped. The most important reason why they should be scrapped is because the real issue about the failure of local governments in our country is the question of the long delayed but inevitable constitutional restructure of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Without restructuring Nigeria, it will be very difficult for us to get local government and local governance in Nigeria right. So, when we restructure Nigeria, what happens? There is no state in the world that is a federal state, truly federal state, where local governments are part 
of the official constitutional tiers of government. There is only one example that I know, and that is India, where they have the panchayats, a form of local government created by constitutional amendment. What we should do is that there should be two tiers of government in Nigeria, the national government and the sub-national government. The sub-national government can then create whatever structures they deem appropriate at the local level. So the question of constitutional restructuring must be addressed. And that leads me to my next point. If, as we know, the current government is opposed to the constitutional restructuring of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, we as citizens who elected them should take the responsibility for the failure to restructure our country. Because if you want a restructured Nigeria, then you should vote for a government that believes that Nigeria as it is is not working and that needs constitutional restructuring. That is my view. The second point, I think that Professor Ulukotun's uh, paper, I think it did not touch on as much as I would have liked, is the fundamental question of leadership. You see, without good leadership, you cannot have good governance. We are missing the point when we keep talking about good governance in Nigeria every day. But the reason we haven't had it in over 60 years is because we still haven't gotten good leadership. That is what some of us were trying to present a vision of how it could look like when we contested the presidential elections in 2019. The final thing I want to touch on is the role of traditional rulers in grassroots development. Very, very important because we're here to get, give this lecture and to celebrate the Aboriginal's birthday. We have seen something happen recently in Kanu State. And that is that the Emir of Kanu's throne has been balkanized and bastardized. We know why. It is to squash an independent voice. So this raises the question of the role of traditional rulers. And I have a radical suggestion to make. I believe that if we want our traditional rulers, who have an important role to play, in local governments, because they are closer to the people, the governments should no longer appoint Nigeria's traditional rulers. Let traditional rulers be selected by their communities, recognized by the governments. Furthermore, I would go further to say that in a restructured Nigeria with a new constitution, traditional rulers should have a formal role that is advisory in government. This is what we should do. We cannot make traditional rulers errand boys for politicians. And where they refuse to play that, to play that role, we begin to play around with them. Thank God the Awujale has been said to be one traditional ruler that no one can mess around with. But there are not too many Awujales in Nigeria, unfortunately. So we must bring about thousands of our journeys through a constitutional reordering of our country. So those are my opening shots and Professor Lugo to the Thank you. Sorry, your godmother cannot help you, she's long dead. So you gotta pay. Alright, 
uh, pray with me. Because we don't have a lot of time, I need to wrap this up. We wanted to throw it open to the audience, but the organizers, for reason of time, have asked me to crave your indulgence. Um, we need to share this that we are speaking on on a wider platform. We need to advocate it. Um, this is something that should be on national television. It should be taken around uh, various parts of the country and so on and so forth. But for us to do this, this professor chair needs resources. He needs resources. We shouldn't leave it only to KBC to fund what is going on here. Indeed, members of the Board of Trustees have joined with him and they put their resources at stake. I want to challenge each and every one of us here. If we like what is going on, if we think that what is going on can change the course of governance in Nigeria, we need to put our money where our mouth is. Did I get that right? No, okay, we need to put our money where our mouth is. So, I'm going to make a call um, that we're not going to ask you to come out or raise your hand, but if you like to be part of this uh, and the endowment for this professional chair, please see me uh, at the end of the event or any member of the board of trustees. They'll be happy to take down your details. Uh, you can make a commitment. It can be a monthly commitment. It can be a yearly commitment. Uh, KBC has already done something in perpetuity. You can also do that. So I uh, please encourage each and every one of us not to leave without supporting this course. For now, I'm just going to take the last shot. One minute. One minute. Your final thoughts, um, Professor Shonai. I'm going to go to uh, 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 Professor Mongaru and then I end with the uh, with Professor Lucas. Have you noticed that I'm the only person that is not a professor sitting here today? Just turn your hand towards me, say, receive Professor Shonai. Well, thank, thank you very much. Uh, what I would really like to emphasize is that there must be a real effort at awareness creation, at conscientization at the grassroots level. And in, indeed, this has to do with education, but not only with formal education. I believe that we have uh, been paying lip service even to formal education. However, we need to also educate our people on their civic responsibilities. It is the responsibility of the citizens to demand accountability from those who lead them. They must let them know that we're not getting the kind of services that we require. In the 21st century, it should not be that Nigerians spend their lifetime in darkness once the sun sets. It should not be. It should not be that our people still trek for kilometers looking for water. This is the 21st century. Those are things that we too in Nigeria should begin to take for granted. And I believe that what we owe ourselves is to go and tell our people that we must learn to demand better services from those whom we choose to be us. That is the point. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. I am only um, agree with my sister, Remy, uh, that it all lies in the hands of the people. And we need to empower our people to demand good governance, to demand accountability from their leaders. What we have today is not in reality a democracy. 
What we have is a ritual that occurs every four years. And political cabals return themselves to power using things that look like the structures of democracy. But like someone said, it's not the foot that counts. It's the counting of the votes that counts. So our people need to be educated. Someone asked me, are you going to run again in 2023? And I said, that is not an important question at this point. I'm stepping back and focusing through to build a nation deeper, a new citizens movement that we have launched to educate our people about how to reclaim their future by knowing what their rights are, how to vote, how to select good leaders, and we must all campaign for electoral and constitutional reform in this country. These are the two things we must do between now and 2020. Electoral reform, constitutional reform. Thank you. Well, yes, uh, I've been edified by uh, these two contributors who are both scholars and politicians. Uh, but we should ask the question, why can't either of them be the genius president? Why do we have a system that is rigged at source against the best and the brightest? And we keep recycling these jaded leaders that don't have vision and that we may be called analog politicians. Yes. <laughs> oh, oh, no, 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 sir. Not, not, uh, no. Uh, we, we, no, no, we, we can't discuss this now. But what I'm saying is that at the top, at the top, we have a big problem. What is it that is wrong with Nigeria building structure? In 2014, we had the National Conference, and it produced some results and recommendations. Only for a year later to be told that the report had been sent to the archives, where they have since released. A nation yeah. yeah. that makes progress does not think like that. We are not listening to the latest ideas. We are not listening to new ways. So, my point is that perhaps if we occupy the space at the base, perhaps if we reform local government, then we can move on progressively to reclaim and recapture the other set, the other types of government, state and the federal. I'm very happy that uh, the incoming is there of the state. A lot, a lot of us rejoice when you are elected. We are looking up to you for you to, to do your best. By God's grace, I believe you will. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Professor. I, I, we have some gifts for you. And on behalf of the Board of Trustees, I'm going to present those gifts. Can I have the gifts? Um, at some point in time, I'm going to also require you to please take a photograph with our donor so that this is well documented. Uh, I hope that definitely all what we have said here is going to go into some kind of community and would like to put it out there in the wider field so that when the advocacy is there, okay, all right. So we can't give you. You already give it. You, you already give it. Yes. So I'm going to give. Uh, he should hand it over to them because you are the chair. So can we have you, uh, Professor Ogadu? Are you ready? As you prefer to be called from today. Just drop your tie before you go. All right. Well, it's my delight, on behalf of the Board of Trustees, the Governor's Chair, 
to present this to you. Uh, for your contribution as a token to appreciate your contribution to the success of this event. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. 
should I go to give us the vote of thanks. Thank you very much, John. Your Royal Majesty, the Abuja of Tabula, the Kuba Bayi, the Allah Fi for you. Your Excellencies, Royal Highnesses here, Chiefs, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. Last year, I recall saying that. The way that we have envisioned this program will be such that it will go into the calendar of everybody, so that every 10th of May, we would head to Jehovah and have this annual lecture. And of course, this is courtesy of His Royal Majesty, the Awitare of Jehovah, who is the donor of the professorial chair in governance at the other mission of Banjo University. The KBC has thanked everybody. In fact, my job is very soon. Um, I want to thank God for today because it's a special day. And we can all see it, even in the person and, and, and the character that I was done here today. today. Um, is very happy, it's his 85th birthday, we rejoice with him. And on this occasion, I'd like to thank everybody who has done up for today's event. Let me especially thank Professor Marco Vigel, who kick-started this whole process about three years ago. I want to thank the former Vice Chancellor of the Olaf Bishop of Bangor University, Professor Adesman the current Vice Chancellor, members of the Board of Trustees, for all the work that was put into put, arranging all of this event. And of course, the very senior personnel of the Olaf Bishop of the University. I want to thank everyone for coming. I want to thank Globacom uh, for their continued support. The real IDCs of the Jebulan who are here present and all distinguished ladies and gentlemen who have graced this occasion. I thank you very much and wish you joining my son Thank you very much. All right, um, can I have uh, a microphone for KBC? Please, can I have a microphone for KBC?